so so Jack, I'm assuming you're gonna go to the Steelers. Yeah, I'm going down to uh, down to Houston. Steelers, Texans. It's low key a big game for both teams early on here. Uh, but when you open that newspaper in Houston on Monday morning, it's gonna say Stroud struggles. Hmm. It's just Th- this is a this is a very good Pittsburgh Steelers defense, one of the best in football. They give Deshaun Watson major problems, and for three quarters they give Jimmy G major problems. They've won two games in a row. Texans fans, and for good reason, are feeling good about C.J. Stroud. And I would be too. I think he's shown promise. He's improved day by day. But now he's going up against T.J. Watt and Cameron Hayward and Alec- Alex Highsmith, a tough front seven who likes to pressure the quarterback. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the best record in football in the last 23 years against rookie quarterbacks. I don't know the exact number, something like 25 and four, somewhere around there. They've dominated rookie quarterbacks. And I think this will be more of the same. I think they really give this kid a tough time and they go down to Houston and win the game. It's really yeah. funny. It's really funny. Let me just say this, Ziggy, that we'll, we'll get uh, over to your point. As I was doing some research for this in, this game in particular, I, uh, I type in, you know, Steelers, Texans, stats, like previews, all that. And the first thing I see is, Steelers, I started laughing hysterically. Steelers face historic challenge against Texans. I was like, all right, this is too good. Like, I, I have to click on That's this. That's a nice clickbait right there. Oh, I, a I, phenomenal I didn't, I didn't see that. Phenomenal <laughs> clickbait. I click on that, and the opening line is, the Pittsburgh Steelers have faced some big-name quarterbacks this season. It's like, okay, Purdy, Watson, Jimmy G. Not, not really big name, but like but, you know, they're good known. quarterbacks. Good, yeah. But their toughest test yet will come in week four when they face the Houston Texans. <laughs> And basically what it came down to was C.J. Stroud is the first rookie in NFL history to throw for 900 yards and four touchdowns without an interception. On the year, he's 78 for 121, 906 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, great job. Whoever wrote that article, phenomenal job of clickbait. I can't say I agree with it necessarily. But yes, this this Steelers team is I may, perhaps facing a challenge in C.J. Stroud. And the, the one other point I wanted to go off, you said the pressure that Pittsburgh can put on them. Too ferocious up front. Today. He's been sacked 11 times this year already, Stroud. And TJ Watt is on is on track for 34 sacks this season. I can see I can see the Steelers as as good as Houston was against Jacksonville and as bad as I think the Steelers offense actually might be. Their defense is able to get the job done here in my opinion. Well, here's the Oh, sorry, you got Ziggy. You got You talked about pressure. Boy, if there's something to worry about the Texans this game, it is their offensive line. Right. So like Laramie Tunsil's out. Shaq Mason's out. George Fant is out. You know, last week, uh, James Daniels and Chugs Okafor hurt. Like they they are down three starters on the offensive line. Last week it was four. This week it could quite possibly be four or five starters out on the offensive oh. line, which makes what CJ Stroud oh, is doing all the more impressive. <laughs> right. Like the fact that he's been able to play pretty well, I get that the Jaguars and Colts aren't the most intimidating defenses in the NFL, but he's put together good games despite just not having an offensive line. That luck might be about to run out, though. <laughs> it is tough to imagine. Like, what are you supposed to do about TJ Watt Houston if you don't have a, have a starting tackle? The um, Houston have a problem. The Steelers lead the league with 13 sacks, and they're tied for third in the NFL with four interceptions this year. Your defense, this, Jack, what, what's great about them, especially given the struggles on offense, which I, I expect to get better as the year goes on, but your defense makes plays. They they get in the end zone. They force big turnovers and bad situations for the opposing defense to then come on the field. It's kind of like Dallas was doing that for a while. Um, you know, We'll see how, how they do without Trayvon Diggs. But when your defense is able to... It's like Iowa football. Iowa football's defense comes on the field and they win it for the offense. They have a better chance of scoring when the defense is on the field. I'm not ready to go there necessarily with the Steelers, but when you have struggles and you can't run, like you, you can't run at all. Yeah, that's that's a that's that's not a good comparison. Uh, I don't know. That's not a good I don't know. You're you're smiling I, at it. That's no. It was funny. No, no, it's absolutely it's, it's absolutely a fair comparison, <laughs> yeah, okay. right? Like, look, you've got a terrible offense. Why is the it's offense terrible? terrible? 
a hated offensive, a hated offensive a hated offensive coordinator. Like You've the, got the, the fans have learned the name of the offensive coordinator and they're chanting for that person to be fired. You wanted a stadium. shirt that said fire Canada. Like the Iowa offense. <laughs> the Iowa the offense, offense is, actually can't score a point. The, no, the, the are the you are offense. you kidding me? The Iowa a couple weeks ago put up 41. How when was the last time the Steelers put up 41? Who are they playing? No, I Cade McNamara threw for two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. The um, Iowa, I Google when they played Iowa State. I think Iowa won the game, right? Iowa beat Iowa State this year. Yes, they did. They, did. they did. I texted as a joke. Someone said the, sent the score on one of the college football chats I'm in. I was like, I was like, oh, what did the defense score twice, or did the defense score? Just messing around. Then Googled the game and realized the defense actually scored, which is just <laughs> yeah. The we're not an Iowa football podcast, but the Steelers struggle. They they struggle a lot. Here, here's my final thoughts though, about this game. Super important for both teams early on. Because you mentioned the Browns are playing the Ravens. One of those teams has to win. So it's important if, for us to pick up a win on the road, which will probably be a home game, but, you know, probably. on the road to stay in first place. And for Houston, if they can get to 2-2 two and two with back-to-back wins against the Jags and the Steelers, two potential wildcard type teams, there's reason to believe, like, why can't we win this crappy division or even make the playoffs? Oh, yeah. There, there's... It, there's two different ways I look at that where I agree if Houston wins, they kind of jump up a spot in terms of the AFC tiers that we did that at the beginning of the off season. This is a chance to m- prove a point like, okay, we're, we don't suck. If you're the Steelers yeah. though, and you want to get where so many Steelers fans are talking about having an easy game. schedule, get to the playoffs, perhaps even win a division, which is right now looking up in the air. This is one you have to win. It's like yeah. Baltimore has to beat Indianapolis last week. Even though it's on the road, Houston. you have to be able to beat the Texans if you want to be a serious AFC threat. It, can I defend our offense for a brief second? You yeah, sure? You could try, and then we'll and then we'll move on because you know this is dragging on a little bit with the Steelers Texans game. But <laughs> the first two weeks of the season, yeah, it looked very bad. But Kenny Pickett was playing two of the most ferocious defenses in football. There was noticeable improvement with the yes, offense last yes. week. Very fair. Very fair. And I expect the same thing against Houston. The offense should be fine enough. Like, if they don't turn the ball over, you that's should win more that than enough. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep, agree. It, it sure was nice for Kenny Pickett when uh, the Raiders dropped an easy pick six and 70% of their entire he, passing EPA came from one play. He threw one bad ball, but Pickett had two touchdowns and like and was a good game manager. Like, the <laughs> offense was fine. 70% of Pickett's passing EPA came from one play. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought he'd go fine. I don't think you look that bad. Hey, if it gets your sign, seal of approval. Um, one last thing before we move on. I came across this quote from the Texans uh, tight end, Brevin Jordan, about CJ Stroud. For This will just get te- Texans fans jacked up if you haven't seen it. He said the best thing that happened to the Houston Texans franchise was us beating the Indianapolis Colts last game last year. We drafted the right guy. Man, he's a leader. He's a phenomenal player and a phenomenal guy with God-given talent. Dude, he's unbelievable. So the Texans... I mean, remember, they beat the Colts and the Bears. They, they wound up losing the first overall pick, and everyone made fun of them at the end of last season. That pick probably would have been Bryce Young had they maintained it, the guy who uh, Jack is not a huge fan of. Yeah, he's the worst of the quarterbacks. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they are loving C.J. Stroud in Houston right now. He's a captain of the team for a reason. You don't see that a lot with rookies. So you, it's it's a fun one this weekend. Again, two young quarterbacks, two teams that uh, – know could could be looking to prove something i mean like this is where tj's brother played for years he'll sack he'll sack stroud 10 times on sunday (laughs) 